Hey everybody, we are bringing you the little razor. And today we're going to be putting in the uh, the new battery. So we're going lithium. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot lighter, so it's gonna go a lot further and a lot faster too. And this, it's a good battery, I love this thing. All right, so that's the cool part about this battery. Um, right now we have lead acid batteries inside here. And the video you're about to see is courtesy a lot of you guys going to that my coffee thing and helping her right buy, me coffee. <laughs> buy her a coffee so this is her little scooter uh we use it on job sites and she gets to run around and grab tools and parts and go up into the uh countryside where we're putting in solar panels yes and so, because of you guys now it's going to have a massive upgrade massive massive from seven amp hour lead acid to 20 amp hour lithium all right mm -hmm. let's go Okay, as you saw in the intro, Kira has a new battery for the scooter. Yep, this one right here, as you saw in the beginning. So it is a 20 amp hour battery and it requires a 30 amp BMS. And um, basically with the BMS, you're going to want to get a spare one of these because if this one goes out, that's in it, then you're going to want to replace it instead of replacing the battery. Because if you replace the battery, that might get expensive. So it's always good to have an extra one. And um, now we're going to start by removing these batteries right here so we can make room for that one, of course. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have lead acid batteries in here. All right. Now, the lead acid batteries are only 7 amp hour. The battery that she has chosen is a 20 amp hour. So it's drastically different. The difference is that these batteries down here they immediately start to sag in voltage. So as soon as you hit the throttle, they start dropping their voltage. It's a natural characteristic of a lead acid battery. However, the 20 amp hour over here is a lithium battery. It maintains its voltage up a little higher. At fully charged, those lead acid, they'll be about 42 volts. This here is at 42 volts, but it keeps it above 36. When this one over here, these would drop to as low as 32. And when it comes to an electric motor, that little motor back there is a little 500 watt motor. That makes a huge difference. So Kira's going to walk around to the other side and we're going to start the process. I'll grab some tools um, and meter and other miscellaneous parts here. And hold that back just a little bit. Huh? <laughs> and she's going to show you here how we're going to start. Now, we're going to start by removing the existing power wires right here. So we have a positive and negative that are on this switch. Now, if you want to go look up there in the video, I'll put a link to where this was adapted to have a tool battery um, added on to the back. So you want to make sure to keep these wires apart from each other there. That'll arc like hell. Um, and you can look here. It was fully charged. This was fully charged, these batteries down here. And we're going to take this terminal here and we're going to use it use the same terminal by cutting this and grafting on the one that comes from the uh the lithium charger right here so um the first step of course is to get these batteries out now these little scooters have this little plastic protector, thing little uh, plastic protector that protects these batteries and all I'm going to do, now look how they just wire everything with red wires. That's kind of goofy, ain't it? So we're going to go ahead and just cut the wires and remove them. They have the standard spade terminals on there, so we can go right back in there later and reuse these batteries, which we will be doing in an outside, because these handle being out in the cold really well. And we'll be doing that. So let me see here. Just cut them away so we don't have any problems. And we'll have the batteries freed up, and that being the terminals. Now, this switch here, I'll have her just stay there with you, and I'll show you these uh, amazing cells that we have for this setup down here. Okay, so right up here, we have 
these 40 amp or 40 sorry 40 volt black and decker batteries and they were made to go into this slot because one day kira goes down the big gravel road and batteries ran out and her lead acid and batteries ran out i ended up having to walk the rest of the way she rolled this thing a mile and a half so the range is accurate about 12 miles i think she ran it at about what 10. Yeah. so we created this little option right here and now she can carry one of those batteries and it's like a spare gas tank yep so works great all right now we're going to start this process again over here to where we're going to just simply remove each cell and take them out so the way that this little scooter is designed it has just the cells kind of loose so you can see those now we're going to reuse these so don't throw them away the cell the battery that's going to go in is going to be this one and it fits just about perfectly without any, here, any problems there we go and i'm going to move it towards the front i want it up there towards the front that way it's away from any of the heat from the controller that's back here and the way that this one's set up here i'll show you the terminals for it it has a standard terminal that goes with it and then we're going to add these wires just like we had them positive and negative back here on this controller so or this switch so this is a standard cam switch that was installed so that we could select back and forth here pull back on that so that we could select back and forth it would point back here for the spare battery and up here for the batteries inside and in the dead center it was off so pretty good little setup and it worked great so i will get these in here and we should be let me make sure i'm not going to do something dumb or crazy here we have of course okay so i made sure i did that right so i had white is going to be the the negative so this came out to be a pretty good little project that we did and she has even ran two batteries with this thing running it out of power i guess you'd say <laughs> twice oh i like it it's really handy yeah it's a nice little build so i can get my wire in there okay there we go and um this will now literally turn this thing in because if seven amp hour lead um would get her a range i'm gonna turn the center there would get her a range of uh up to 12 miles you can just imagine um what a what a battery of this capacity would do for her okay so we're seeing how that's going to work it looks like it's going to work clear now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take some padding and put down in here because you see these pieces right in here um and i would bumps. yeah i would normally just leave that in there but you see that one right there i can't break that one away and i don't want to cause a hole in the bottom of this pan so we're going to take some padding and put in here for the battery and i believe i've got some uh, foam and hold on i'll grab that i'm so excited this is stuff that comes out of uh a lot of solar panels is this stuff here hold the camera back some hunt okay is this stuff right here comes out of there and it's going to be pretty simply done so i'm just going to kind of go across here and give me an idea of what it works works like and give it a cut make me a piece make it actually so i can double it because it looks like we got plenty of headroom on this thing but what we don't have a lot of is width so we want to make sure you get that in there and then i'll make the impressions so i know where to kind of notch it out around those and the length looks like about right in here so this is this is just standard packing foam but it's durable and it works for the process
So we'll put that one in there. Make sure I got that correct. Yes. And, um, and we'll lay another layer on top of that around these wires here. I've got a small spot right down here. I'll just take that and just kind of pinch that out of there. Okay. All right. And we'll lay this other one up on top of that. Let it go all the way down there. We're going to use more of this to isolate the battery. So it's not going to be like it's just floating in here. There we go. So how you like that? Plenty of clearance. We'll put a piece of pad on top, a little bit on the sides. So I'll go ahead and cut that in. We'll make pieces for the sides here. And wedge the battery in. So you want that battery in there pretty snug. Yeah, that way it doesn't get knocked around in there. Correct. Because we got a lot of gravel roads. Oh, yeah. We live out here in the middle of nowhere, and it's got uh, quite a bit of travel that this thing could do. So, let's see. That will require a thinner piece. Let me grab that. I'll grab a small, thin piece here. All right, so, all right, all right, so has a piece of molded plastic right here that's kind of good for holding it, and we'll make us a small piece right in here for this side. Almost don't need one, but I just want to prevent any vibration if we don't have to have any, okay? Wrong one there. That looks pretty good right there. And then, of course, we will just take and put some pieces in. When the lid goes on this thing, this will all squish down in here. And now we'll make us a piece for the very top. And um, put that in along with... Making a piece back here, we'll use some kind of foam back here to kind of lodge, lodge it in. But I think it's, it ain't moving, so we're pretty tight. Now, this is a big problem here, so I'm going to show you how that's going to work out. All right, so we have the original. We have the original lithium charger that comes with this battery. And the unique thing about this controller is that it has a separate charge system that runs into it right here. And this battery requires a, it has a charge and it has a power out. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to omit this and we're going to use these wires and the original old charge charger see that razor we're going to take that part right there we're going to get its polarity figure out what it is by using a multimeter and we're going to take the uh the new charger and we're going to basically cut it here so that we can use that piece coming from inside to go to this so it'll plug in to that and it'll be just a long enough piece to go to the end of this wire right here see so that will allow it to come through the original old port and if you notice this does have a three wire design but it's not a three wire it's only two there's just two supplies coming in so we're gonna pause right now and I'm gonna get these identified and we'll figure out which ones to use and then I'll explain which ones we chose and we're going to get this cut and get the wires identified. Hopefully they may be red and black already. Get them identified. Of course, we're not going to cut it while it's plugged in, but we're going to get them identified so they can come from here to here. And then we'll put shrink tape on everything, secure it all and show this thing operating on this battery. So one of the things that stops a lot of people is whether or not this controller 
is affected by this right here. So we might have to tap this using this original plug and going to this power. Now, that's only so the controller senses the voltage and that might have to be done. We'll determine that after we get this hooked up. Okay, we'll be back in just a few. So we're working on whose? My scooter. And what do you use it for? Tools. <laughs> so y'all can do this. I'm gonna explain more of this, but be sure to look at up here in the corner. There'll be like a little eye or a little symbol link and y'all guys subscribe. So all of this stuff here, exactly what you need to make one of these run a long way. And always order yourself spare tires and bearings and all that because the world economy is going to hell. You might not be able to get a lot of these parts. And you'll never know if something goes wrong. Or no. <laughs> and this one right here is a uh, 3D printed model. And all of this stuff here, everything to do this with, all these parts, I'll put links or you'll see them links in that video there. All right. Let's get this identified and then we'll show you what we did. Okay, now we have Miss Kira with her somewhat completed project. Yeah. Now, what we've done is we've taken the batteries, and you can see the math back here, and we're going to show you by turning this on. The batteries, and I'm going to put this wiring on top of it. This is a lot of the wiring that got removed. It didn't need to be there anymore. All right, so we're looking at about 5.8 pounds. Yeah, there's a little extra there. So balance that out, all the batteries we're working with about 5.8 pounds. Now, I screwed up in the beginning of the video. I didn't show you the weight of the battery that went in. So the lithium 20 amp hour battery, there it is. Look below the video and you'll get the links to all of these different items. Now, the 20 amp hour is as big as you can fit in this. And it's only a few dollars more than a 16 amp hour. So it is a, it is a 10 cells. 10 cells to make the 40 volts and it is six. So there is 60 cells total in this battery. It's very powerful. Now, uh, at 5.8, we're 16.74 right there. And so you're nine pounds, basically nine pounds, just a little over nine pounds that's been removed. And for Kira, that weighs what now? 120. So she weighs 120 pounds. And as a girl that weighs 120 pounds, if you knock nine pounds off, you're... Yeah. <laughs> Life. Yeah, you knock you knock a big amount off. So for her or me, I weigh about one ninety, um, one six one. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not over two hundred. So not anymore. Yeah, but you're a lot bigger than me. So yeah. So uh, nine pounds being knocked off of this is huge. So that is a big advantage. The other advantage is the fact that the battery that's in here, right here, is a. Um, a battery that's going to maintain 40 volts even when you hit it real hard if you accelerate real fast and the lead acid battery would literally drop to 30 to 32 volts i mean if you were hard accelerating if you even got near a hill it would almost cut the controller they they, they label these controllers as that they'll disconnect at 28 volts they don't uh, 25 belt they're gone they, they shut off but it'll let you go for a while at 28 volts as long as you can still get the amps coming in because it does the math inside itself but this thing is not going to do that so a lithium battery is going to stay at that high voltage as long as it can which gives you more rpms and um, another thing that i didn't do is in this test Kira, come over here and hold the camera for quick okay we'll get over there a fully charged lead acid batteries okay got me 405 rpms and i've got this over here and i'm going to show you so I, I'm y'all um, y'all y'all give me a break. I am on Cipro Cipro Flux and whatever the hell it is, and it ain't been doing me justice. So all right, now we're going to show you more about how we wired this in. But I'm going to show you what the RPM. So we were at like what is it four four oh three four oh two? It 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 dropped immediately to just four hundred as we hit the throttle and held it. So I'm going to switch this over so that the power is going from this battery right here. And I'm going to turn the power on. So all the, all the regular switches still work just like they used to. And then I'm going to set this up. You see that light right there? And I'm going to come up here and hit the throttle. Hold this on here and here. And you can see the RPMs.
So we got 440. So we're basically about 35 RPMs faster because the voltage don't sag. So this bike that would run 19, almost well, with her on it, it'd run 20. With me on it, it would just barely get up to about almost 18. I had used my phone. I got 17.7 miles per hour on this bike. So now it'll probably go probably close to 25 miles per hour. Same motor, same chain, same gears, everything, but much better battery and nine pounds lighter. So over here, what we did is I took the original Razor uh, battery charger for lead acid and I, of course unplugged and cut the wires now i'm gonna see if i can possibly get it in focus here there is like ribs on the plastic on this side and this side it's smooth the side with the ribs on the plastic ended up being the positive side so what i did is i just took that same fact and found it located it on this one so you have the ribs on this side see i don't know if you can see that there you go and then down here you have it just smooth so the smooth side is the negative this one that came from the the charger this charger comes with this battery for like 150 something dollars so it had a red and a black uh, red and black wires made it real easy so what i did is i uh cut them in different lengths and staggered them from each other soldered them put tiny pieces of shrink tape around those so they wouldn't puncture the casing and then slid two layers of shrink tape um, around that and there you go right there nice and it pretty good uh sealed job the other thing is is because a lot of people complain about these shorting out right here i went ahead and i put a piece of shrink tape that went around that strain relief and down the length of it so now it's just as simple as plug it in so here we go look this is the charger separate circuit with the bms that goes to the battery and it's only up to, I think, a maximum of four amps. And this right here, this is 20 gauge wire, plenty good for four amps. I mean, you can handle it on like nine. So here it is, runs from the power down here, and it just connects just like that. We'll tuck it down there out of the way. And Kira caught me being a dumbass. Um, that's what she's good for. Um, I feel sorry for whoever marries her. So she caught me saying, where's Fuse? All right, there's Fuse. So I, I, I installed the fuse in there and we plugged everything in and now we're good to go. So there we are here. We'll go ahead and move that little protector out of the way and see it's oriented. You can't screw up with this and always make sure you plug this in first before you ever, this is a lithium battery, before you ever do the, oh, you didn't have that on. Okay. Um, before you ever do the plug in right here and then you'll see that it's still fully charged now i want you to watch that because i'm going to go up here and i'm going to hit the throttle and you'll see how it reacts to it see that that little quick surge drew it just underneath fully charged voltage there now i can run that for a long time and then the light will turn red see it's got a certain flicker all right so that's hooked up now normally that controller will not let you, because of this wire here, it will not let you do that. So you do not need to use the wire that's going to come off of in here. And there's the leftover part right there. So you don't have to use that because that's just a, basically uh, the charge travels through the controller so that you can't try to drive it while you have this hooked up. That's all it does. So we're going to go ahead and let it finish charging itself off I'm, it says charge so um big difference 20 amp hour and then i want to show you this so in case you guys did not ever watch that video and in case you don't want to go watch that video i'll show you real quick what it is it is a three-way cam switch zero is off so i'm going to show you that i'm going to click to zero here kira come over here and hold the camera huh? and you'll see there's 36 volts full charge and we're going to be putting all kinds of new stuff on this. So in the middle, you see that go off? Now pointed back, you see it come back on. Pointed back leads to this battery. So this battery sitting here is a full, I think, 6 amp hour, 40 volt battery. And there it is. You see that? And if you want to see, does that work okay? Now, now it doesn't... Uh, 
it's only 405 RPMs, but so it's not as quiet as the speed as that other one, but pretty cool. Now, there you go. She can carry a spare battery with her. Now she's got literally better than three times the distance because remember the voltage is not going to sag enough to cause that controller to shut it off so i'd say this is probably a what 40 mile vehicle and the other thing is, is we're going to be putting in one of these that has 40 volt or 48 48 up to 48 volts and down to uh 13.8 volts which will be running one of these yeah yeah she's gonna love this so this headlight is a cob light and it will go up here we'll be mounting it make a new bracket that's not that bracket's not good enough for this so we'll make a new bracket for it and we'll put her in the other gear that goes up here for it but there'll be a headlight and then there'll be a bar style tail light that'll go all the way across the whole back of that it doesn't need any turn signals and actually you don't even need any of this legally but we're going to put it on there because if you've ever seen um you know running cars with their headlights on motorcycles with their headlights on it's a lot safer so i worry about her that way and even though she don't take it on out regular roads um there's enough uh tractors and other people going up down roads out here that we want to make sure that we're good and that thing is good for 150 feet and it will put a beam out that is about I don't know, 50 foot wide at 150 feet and just about 30 feet in front of her, about 10 feet wide. And it does a hell of a job. You, you've probably seen these. These are really good, 12 volt, and they only use seven watts of power. And this is good for about four amps, which it'll run everything. Four amps is about 50 watts of power. So it'll run everything, no problems. But what do y'all think? Even have her a little USB and everything else up here for stuff. But what do y'all think? Did it work? 20 amp hour, taking out 7 amp hour, and knocking off almost 10 pounds of weight. All right, guys, I think we achieved something. It can be done. It's not hard to be done. Look how the wiring was done. Pay attention to it. Make sure you get your polarity straight. And I think that uh, I think the Cure's got a good scooter. What do you think? I think I got a great scooter. I can't wait to ride it tomorrow. Ain't she something? Uh, she'd rather have that in a pickup, right? No, I know better. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Eco smart. Yeah. And the light's going to make it look really cool. Yeah. New headlight for it too. All right, guys. Video's coming up on that real soon. On that bot, on that EcoFlow. And we figured out how we got this battery now. We're going to do a video on it and show you what it's like. And then we're off to the races with these inverters back here. So you guys make sure you subscribe share there's a thing whatever y'all be good